Today's video I'm looking at the Brother HF27, it's 27 stitches, it's a heavy duty machine, it's called the Strong and Tough. We're going to see if it lives up to that name today. So we'll have a quick scan of the box, I picked this up for about £250 on Amazon and it's classed as a heavy duty machine. I can't see much on the front or on the back, it just says sewing machine, sewing machine sewing machine so they're not giving you a lot of information on the box it tells you that brother are on your side it tells you about brother earth if they are on our side are they listening to the environmental impact that we are making people tend to want to make bags so that they don't need to go to a supermarket with plastic bags and we're trying to eradicate that but I've got a feeling there's going to be a lot of plastic and you've seen I've opened this brand new fresh and the first thing I see <laughs> is a lot of plastic I'm going to bring you in over the top over here right so you can see bubble wrap and more bubble wrap and the machine so I'm going to pull that machine out the machine is wrapped up in a lot of plastic <coughs> Right, and stuck some more plastic, and there's all the bits and bobs in there. Got the pedal, got some bobbins, I've got a CD or a DVD with the instructions, I've got some accessories, and I've got a plastic cover. Right, now I've got a feeling. Amazon have a habit of doing this. I've got a feeling that these shouldn't be in there and that this is a pre-owned machine or you know repackaged up and sent back. I bought this brand new off the Amazon website and um, it looks like it's been assessed properly by brother and then sent back. So let's have a look. I'm going to take this off. So we'll take off the covering and we'll ignore that. I've um, just had a quick uh, pause to check if I did actually buy a brand new machine and I have. So I don't know what's going on here. Um, but I do know Brother do package all their machines up in plastic. So why would it be any different? Okay, it just seems like a lot of plastic, more than usual. All right, so there we go. It looks quite neat, doesn't it? I love this design on the front. I love the shape of this machine. It looks very simple, but it's got these buffers on them. I think it gives you that aesthetic of being tough, doesn't it? Um, let's just have a look around and see what we've got. So we've got our pedal, we've got our uh, cover, our bag of accessories and all sorts of things. So let's have a quick look around the machine now we've got it out of the box. So what can we see on the front? We can see the stitch selector, which is selected by the handle on the side. Now there are 27 stitches and the way they've presented the stitches is you've got half of the utility stitches on the top and then you select the stretch stitches using the SS dial on the top. So the stitch length has to be turned all the way to the left and you reveal an SS on the top. That SS then means that when you select stitches, you're selecting the lower half, the lower two rows of stitches. So they are this, so they are the stretch stitches. The other thing that you can see on the front is this beautiful aesthetic. I absolutely love it. It feels so nice to touch and it looks quite funky, doesn't it? It's a 2016 issue machine, so it's been around um it's been around a while. What else can we see on the front? You've got the reverse button on the front there as well, which is really handy to have it up there. What I'm going to do is pull off this accessories box and reveal the free arm and inside the free arm you've got the slide button for the drop feed and you can hear it activate like that and if you turn your hand wheel a full rotation it activates it again if I put that back for a moment the hand wheel if I go to the side the hand wheel is a, a nice glossy finish 
Again, it's a lovely colour, uh, complements the whole of the look. The Brother machines have these grooves on all their machines, which is fantastic for anyone, whether you're a beginner or an advanced sewer. It's handy to have that there because when you're focusing over here and you're not looking up here to look at the hook, you want to just be able to feel that you've got the hook at the top so you can finish your uh, stitching. If we go to the top, we look at the top of the machine, you've got your stitch length, you've got your width, uh, zigzag width. On the zigzag width, you've also got the needle position. So you can't alter the zigzag width if you want the needle to be over to either side or if you want it working in the middle. So if you want yours, you don't tend to just keep your needle in the middle when you're stitching. Those stitch needle, those needle positions are really only for straight stitch anyway. And then of course you've got your tension dial at the front. The other thing you can see is the bobbin winder. Now I do like the brother bobbin winding system because you've not got to go through the faff of putting your thread through the hole in the bobbin. You literally just put the bobbin down, wind the thread round, cut the thread and push it towards the guide and off it goes. So that system is a really good system. The problem is it does have pr uh, negatives as well. So that people tend to get threads trapped underneath and once they do that, it's very difficult to get this cap off and remove that thread. And I've had problems with machines coming in for repair where that has happened. But with anything, you do have your pros and cons. It's a horizontal feed threading system and you've got a lovely stencil design on the top of the machine to show you how to thread up your machine. Going down to the threading system, down to the needle plate, we have an automatic buttonhole. So you've got one step buttonhole and they've just got one design on there. So it's just one design on the buttonhole there and it's easy to, to use and they've got a threading system. Make sure you have your needle in the Make sure you have your needle in the middle and at the highest point to make sure that grooves at the top. And on this Brother machine, again, they've got that easy threading system for the bobbin. It's really nice. In fact, you could probably do it with one hand um, where it cuts the thread for you and you've not got to and you've not got to draw that thread up. That's a really nice bonus. Now, if I take you all the way around to the back, you can see you've got your uh, balance, your tension balance there. So sometimes what happens is when you sew a buttonhole, uh, the zigzag on one side tends to be a lot denser than the other side. And what this does is you just turn it and adjust it so that the zigzags are balanced on both sides. Again, the handle, that's really important to me. I need a good handle on my sewing machines so I can take it to class. It's a, a good weight. It feels strong and tough, actually, so that's good. Looking at the strong and tough side of it, let's have a look at the power. It's, oh, disappointing. It's actually a 51 watt power. Okay, so at 250 pounds, I'm getting 51 watts of power for a strong and tough sewing machine. I'm not really getting many stitches anyway. I'm, I'm getting 27 stitches. I would have liked more, but you compromise that for a strong and tough machine. Coupled with the fact I don't have a presser foot pressure dial means I'm not sure this machine is going to be able to handle thick, heavyweight fabrics and go all the way down to my soft, lightweight fabrics. So I need to know, will I be able to make a prom dress for one customer who comes in, the curtains for the next, and the cosplay costume for the third. You've got to weigh those things up. You don't want to keep buying a new machine, have three different machines allocated to different jobs. Ideally, you should be able to buy one machine that does the lot. Okay, let's take our focus off here at the moment and we'll look at the accessories. We've got a cover in another polystyrene, in a polythene bag and it's a polythene cover. Here's a, a bag of goodies. Let's have a look. Wow, okay, we've got some nice things in there. We've got, so we've got a blind hem foot. That's going to be brilliant for, you know, taking up your trousers, doing curtains, doing all sorts of things. 
um, where you're hemming. You've got a seam ripper, very important. A one step buttonhole foot. They've given you a twin needle and three needles here. These tend to be a size 14. Um, they've not given me a number on them. Maybe it's in the manual, have a look. And you've got two spool caps in there. You've got your extra spindle for your twin needles. Now the thing is on these machines, you actually place that on the bobbin, on the bobbin winder. Let's have a look at all the feet. So you've got your buttonhole foot, your blind hem foot, a button foot, a zip foot. Now I don't like these plastic ones. They always give those with the cheaper machines like the LS14. They've given you a Teflon foot or rather a non-stick foot with the coating on the bottom to stop it sticking to um, anything shiny, plastics, leathers, PVC. Um, that's a really handy foot to have. You've got your all-important screwdriver so you can clean underneath the bobbin plate. You've got your brush for your housework and you've got some extra bobbins there which is really useful. Um, I think that's a really nice collection of goodies. You don't get a felt for your thread though. Um, that would be handy to have. Okay, let's have a look at the instructions. Instructions to me are as vital as anything. You need to sit down and read them. So they've given you a threading system. So it's not a book as such, but rather a poster. Hmm. Okay, so you open it up, you've got your lower threading, your upper threading, how to sew a straight stitch, how to use your pedal, and then sewing buttonholes, a whole uh, education on that, about how to use the adjuster on the back to balance your tension and how to clean your machine, which is really good. I'm going to check what size needles we've got. Uh, needle set, a size 11, a 14 and a 16. Okay, they've not told you that. They've not labeled them and they've not made it easy. Let's have a look if we can find out which one's which. And if I want to have a look to see what they are, I'm gonna zoom right in. Don't look at my dirty mirrors. Okay, to identify the size of the needle. And I think that middle one is the 11. I'm going to remove the needle actually and see what size they've put in the machine. Right, I'm really struggling to get this needle out. So what I'm going to do is I've got some pliers and I'm going to pull it out. And it's not coming out. Oh, that's absolutely no good because chances are I've damaged the tiny one. You can see this whole screw's come out. And in fact, I've broken the needle. And that's really properly jammed in there. Ah, oh, that's really bad. So, <laughs> there we go. And so I've got my 75, I've got my 100, and this one is a 90. Right, so I'm going to go. So I've got the non stick foot in uh, straight. You've got a height of what's that, six millimeters? Not quite six millimeters, yes, it is. And then we do the extra thrust, so the extra lift, it does take you quite high, takes you up to 
What's that? 11 millimeters. So that's an 11 me. So that's an 11 millimeter lift, which is great, isn't it? It means we can get thicker fabrics through. So let's try four layers. So that that extra lift shouldn't see a problem with this. Okay, let's just pop that down and let's sew. Okay, that's gone through really nicely. Sounded good. Didn't sound like it was exercising any sort of effort at all. So even at 51 watts, it was fine. All right, so upon checking the internet, um, because it doesn't tell you in the manual or anywhere else, um, this machine goes at 800 stitches a minute. I'm going to pr push it as fast as it'll go. So that's sort of even slower than some standard sewing machines actually. So, um, but that's down to the power of the motor. They've, um, you know, they're not going to, if they're not going to give you a good powerful motor you're not going to get the speed let's um do some zigzags on there so we did number 16 let's give number 16 a go um there we go 16. we're going to go as wide as we can Let's bring that out and have a look at them so we've got a really good stitch there that's really lovely let's see if it's balanced underneath and again we've got some uh, stitching showing through so it means the bottom's too tight which 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 means we've got to increase the tension on the top and hopefully that will do the job because this is all glossy um, you only get the support around in this metal area you don't get the support for the sticky fabric everywhere else that's a downfall um, it would be nice if you had a bigger metal plate area but just the way it is Okay, that's better. But we're still seeing an irregularity and I shouldn't have to be going, I shouldn't have to be increasing the tension that high. And if that doesn't work, then I quit. <laughs> so we're on eight. We just about managed to hide the stitches because you can still see specks of the lilac coming through. Okay, so that's really quite high uh, for a supposedly heavy duty sewing machine. I would have expected it to go above one, um, one maybe. Um, let's not be too harsh on the machine because it's it's proving to be a very difficult machine to boast about. Um, Right, so this needle's not coming out either. Wow. Okay, so <laughs> strong and tough. It holds and it holds my needles strong and tough. <laughs> I'm going to put in a 60 because we're going to work with um, some chiffon. I'm actually going to put some lightweight threads through the machine right so i've got some chiffon here i have set the machine to be a straight stitch which is stitch number two i've given myself a long um, stitch length of three not too long and i've made sure i'm set in the middle for the needle to be sat in the middle which you can see and we've put the tension back to four i've put a size 60 needle in there and a lighter thread the thread is a 40 twist so I'm going to just fold this chiffon over twice and put the needle in so I've got that ready to go and I can hold them for the next bit of chiffon there and we can go. Okay, there's good control on the foot pedal and that's what we like. I want to be able to control that speed and mechanical machines are far better than digital machines for that control truthfully and that's given me a really nice stitch 
So strong and tough, but not powerful. And it seems to go over that hump okay. So it's handled that really well actually. Consistent stitching all the way through. Um, I thought it was all right Mitchell, sorry. Tension's a bit uh, tight on the bottom, tension's changed. I'm going to just tighten it on the top a little bit more. I'm going to do that again, I think, just to see if I get better tension. So the inside seam is the seam I've just done. Um, and you do get irregular stitching. That's not going to look great as a top stitch. I'm using regular cotton here. If you were using a top stitch in thread, you would see that quite noticeably. I'll try it again using the leveling off um, feature. So if I go over there a little bit, because I want the full crossover piece there. So I need to come a bit closer. Okay, that's no good on there. Right. So when we get to the point where we're going uphill, what you do is you leave your needle down, lift your presser foot, you hold on to that foot like that and push the black button in. Okay, and then while you're holding it in, just put that foot down and it's supposed to level off, but it isn't. You see how <laughs> it's still going upwards. So I've tried it a few times, let's have a look. The stitches are a little bit better, but they're still irregular, aren't they? You can see that, that's the lilac stitch on the top. Okay. So when you want to go uphill and you've got lots of layers and thicknesses, what you can do is I'm going to go on this side of my rows so you can see you can put the foot down and can you see how the foot's not level lift up your presser foot press it down level put the black button in and then put the press foot down again and can you see how the foot's level now and when i sew i should see a nice even stitch you can see how they're uneven, so they start off really shallow and they start forming bigger. 